Kissing Booth 3 is the fifth film in the Kissing Booth saga. There's, of course, the original Two Kissing, Two Booth, The Kissing Booth, Tokyo Drift, just Kissing Booth. And then here we are with Kissing Booth 3. It's confusing, the titles are confusing. But how does the movie stack up to the others? Let's find out. If you love the Twilight Saga and the Divergent series, why? I assume this is kind of the same audience. Maybe, possibly, I don't know, it's certainly not for me. After Kissing Booth 3 showed up in my feed on Netflix for the upteenth time, I thought, you know what, this thing's been trending every time it comes out. People seem to really like them. Let's give it a chance. Didn't even bother with the first two. So this is a review that's definitely aimed at uh, teenagers that like this franchise. If you love the Kissing Booth movies, maybe just don't watch this. It's, I, I, I'm a, I'm an old, out of touch guy. Okay, I don't get what the what the kids are into these days. Apparently, they're into terrible movies, though. Turns out I was right. Although for about half of the film, I thought that Lee and Ellie, the two main characters, were brother and sister, which was awkward. They kind of look alike, so I think I'm forgiven. Oh, and also Lee is an absolute bitch in this film. I don't know what his end game is. I don't know what his character was like in the first two films, but oh my god, what, why? Lee and Noah Flynn are brothers, and they've been kind of pining for the same girl, I think, for the, the past few films. Uh, the, the main character played by Joey King. I can't blame him, Ellie's kind of the whole package. She's a gamer, she's cute, She's looks like she's about 15 years old, so that she's got the jailbait thing going on. Um, she, you know, cleans, she cooks, she works. Just an all-around American girl, you know? And these two guys, well, mostly Noah, he, he's just a stallion of a man who could probably get anyone he wanted, but no, we're gonna do the thing we do in a lot of these teen films where two or three guys are constantly trying to get the one, I wouldn't say plain, but kind of, you know, more down-to-earth, you know, looking girl. She's, she's, she's an attractive girl, but you're looking at these stallions of men and they, they have the entire world at their fingertips and they just keep going after this one. It's a little silly and I, I know what they're doing here, movie. I know what you're doing. It's the th same thing these movies always do. They try to get a girl that's relatable so that people that see them put themselves in their shoes, in their position, and they think, yes, I too could have two or three or four men fighting over me at all times. Because that's also how teenage boys think. I, I used to be one years ago. And I remember every waking moment of every day, I was constantly thinking about girls and how I could be with them forever. I was never just like hanging out and doing stupid stuff with my buddies. It was always just, how can I win her over? Can I set up some sort of an elaborate, outdoor, beautiful proposition thing for her? I must have her in my life 24 seven. It's so realistic. And what makes it even more relatable? is that they're all rich. Not Joey, her, her, dad, her, her family's not, her mom's dead, her dad lives in a quaint Tuscanish type house. I don't know, I thought it was very beautiful how they filmed it and stuff made it look like a, a very nice place, but I guess they're poor in comparison to the multi-million dollar brats that are the rest of the film. The plot of Kissing Booth 3 is intense. It's remarkable, it's emotional, it's everything I want from a Kissing Booth film that I've never seen before. Uh, no kissing booth, for starters, that's that's prime, that's a must. To not have a kissing booth in a film called Kissing Booth is an absolute must. Number two, a lot of montages. I need a montage, I love them. There's about five of them in here, they're all great. They all feature our characters doing wild, zany stuff off a bucket list that looks like it would cost a fortune just to do one of those things. They do all of them. It's every day they do stuff, it's, it's great. They live in a beach house for the summer. Multi-million dollar beach house, gorgeous. It, it looks like it's ready for every magazine you could possibly put it in, every online brochure of where to stay. You would see pictures of this place. The issue they're struggling with is mom and dad want to sell it because property values or something or another, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a real estate mogul. <laughs> I don't know what the market's doing right now. These people do though. And they're thinking, you know what? We got to get out. This makes Lee lose his shit because he grew up in this place with his brother and Ellie. Uh, I mean, they, they're childhood friends and they're gonna lose it all and go to college and not see each other, even though Ellie said she was gonna go to college with them, but she's not now because she's gotten invited to all these different places. She got accepted to other prestigious schools and Lee's gonna be a complete bitch about the whole thing. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna make their time count. They're gonna go through their, their bucket list they made. They're gonna check everything off and they're gonna you know live happily ever after. 
Or that's the hope at least. So I hated this film so much that I could only make it about 35 minutes in before I had to shut it off. I finished it uh, like two more sittings it took me to get through this whole thing. It was just an absolute nightmare. It was hell on earth for me. I don't get the appeal. I just don't. The, the characters aren't very fun outside of Ellie sometimes. Although for the last 40 minutes, she's crying pretty much nonstop. It's a, her whole life is a whirlwind. You know, she has the whole picking a college and the whole picking out which guy of the three like her. Although Lee, I guess, just wants to be friends. He's like a hardcore friend. Like straight up friend zone to the point where he doesn't even know he's friend zone. He's, he's, he's accepted it. He's like a QAnon member. He's just all in, no matter what. I started to enjoy the movie more when I took the film from Lee's perspective as a psychopath. Once I thought, you know what? Lee's a deranged fucking crazy dude. Then the movie was way better because he's like, we have to complete these tasks on the list or you cannot be with my brother. If you don't do them all, you're dead to me. I'll kill you. I'll kill everyone you know and love. And then I was like, whoa, this is this got pretty psychologically twisted because that's the only way Lee becomes a remotely believable person to me is if he is mentally deranged. This kid is the worst. They're trying to do the whole Hunger Games thing where you got PETA, Pita Bread and um, Gale. Gale's the tall drink of water. Pita's the shorter guy, blonde. Gale's, you know, brunette. I mean, they're doing the same playbook here. Molly Ringwald's in this, just cashing another easy paycheck. Nobody seems invested in the slightest in this movie. It's just absolute shit. The things happen nonstop. Uh, one minute they're playing Mario Kart out on the track. That's the best part of the film, by the way, uh, because it was Mario Kart related. That's really all it takes for me to be invested. Uh, fake CG bananas getting thrown. It's it just comically stupid, but whatever. At least it was something. It was something. Ellie's doing all sorts of stuff. She's trying to juggle all these different guys. She's working. She has to pick up her brother and help her dad out on occasion. She has to deal with the fact that her dad's moved on and has now found another girl to love after the mom passed away six years ago. And she's kind of a bitch about it. She's like, dad, you should never be with anybody ever again. I'm a teenager. Meanwhile, the guys, I swear, just spend their entire day writing poetry to Elle, texting her, thinking of ways they can win her over. Do these guys not have friends? Do they not have other people they hang out with? Well, sometimes, but when they hang out with them, they just continue to talk about her. I will say the one thing they are really good at is stringing together a party just on the fly, just on a whim. They had a party one night where there was, it was just all beautifully strung up lights everywhere. At one point, Noah puts like a thousand candles throughout the house, strings up different lights for Ellie to just show up and tell him, I have to go hang out with your brother Lee, who I'm not going out with, but we're just like super good friends and you need to understand this. It's really weird. It's really relatable. Filming wise, it's good. There's some playful fonts and text treatments that show up. Music's about as you know generic as it gets. It's got some throwback. 90s and 80s tunes here and there. They're, they're, they're edited kind of sloppily though. They cut out really quickly. It's like 10 seconds of a song, done. We gotta move on. This is just ADD to the maximum. But visually it looks nice. It's not low budget. They, they definitely put some time into it and effort. There's a horrible green screen scene at the end. I won't spoil the ending for, for those of you that care. Terrible green screen though. And they even have the audacity to put it in the bloopers where they're in front of that green screen. It's like, yeah, I knew that, that was horrible. Why are you showing everyone else how bad it is? But Lee's a psychopath. And this whole film series would have worked a lot better if they would have focused on that, really dived into his psyche and what makes him tick, which apparently is unending bucket list items. Well, that's my review of The Kissing Booth 3. If you saw it, let me know your thoughts. If I'm way off and this is actually a fantastic movie, a fun movie that you just, Turn your brain off and have a good time with. Except for I didn't have a good time with it. And my brain was on the floor. Just wasn't even functioning during this. You can also give the review a like if you had some fun. Subscribe as I put out new content every other day, it seems like. And uh, hopefully I'll see you around the channel. Take care. Thanks again for watching the video. If you made it this far, maybe you want to think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. We have tiers starting at just $1. You can also join me right here on YouTube via the join button. There's a lot of ways to help show your support. You can even just share the video. That'll help. All right, hopefully I'll see you around. Take care.